Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston, and uh, here's our contact information. Uh, this is the fourth video of four, and we're going to import the Traverse uh, data we collect in the field. And we use the Infinity Office software to post process uh, this Traverse. So if you have Infinity, uh, it's important that we make sure that we have the uh, TPS Traverse in or TPS option, and that'll allow us to, uh, to process the, the Traverse. Uh, if you don't have the TPS option, then the, the stuff that we show you in here will be grayed out. So you just have to purchase that to your EID and allow you to do what we do in the video. So that's pretty important. So once again, uh, this is what we ran in the field and we're gonna close this uh, and adjust the data that we can compare it to uh, our RTK data. All right, so what we'll do is we'll escape out of here real fast. And uh, I'm gonna pull up Infinity office software and I'm gonna, under the file I'll come in here and create a new project and I'll just call it put a name for today's date. All right uh, we got some default settings over here. I might just increase the resolution of my distance and we'll create this project and uh, so right now I'll say import and we'd import the DBX data so I have it backed up to my hard drive. So once again, just wherever you have it stored, just click uh, right import all the data. We're not gonna sort by date. Uh, there is this box here called import deleted points. Um, I have it checked. We had one client that were troubleshooting some data that's unchecked. And when we had that checked, uh, it really helped out big time uh, in this traverse process. I'm not too sure exactly what it did, but maybe the crew deleted something that was critical for the when they're traversing in the field. So that's just a little tip just to keep an eye on. So let's import, I'll keep that, I'm gonna keep that as a standard for me. We hit import. And now this shows the data that, that we uh, use in the field. Um, if I hit, if your CCP is current, this thing will be able to be checked and you can hit the Esri map, it'll show the background map. Uh, if you come down here, the, this is a hexagon imagery, this is a bit finer resolution. And this is real handy, so it just embeds the imagery behind the data that we collected, so you can see exactly where we are in the real world. What I'll do real fast is, uh, here's our raw data here. It shows all the setups. I can right click, go to data report, and this will be everything we did in the field. It's just a nice report. You want to save, print for your job file, and it'll show all the uh, observations that we took and everything that we did and the traverse information. So. We'll scroll down here. This is the initial adjustment or closure in the field unadjusted. So it's, it's real handy and it shows all the, the uh, sets that we shot and everything. So it's a very handy tool and resource. What we'll notice is we've got a point here that we set up on. If I go to the inspector um, and we click on the three dots, this shows uh, the control points that we set up on. And notice that these are now TPS setups and we've got control points. So I pulled in the control points that we use in the field are, are point number one and six. If I take a little bit deeper under TPS and go to our setups, you'll see that I got a point here called setup number one and it's got like a one dash one. So if I came back and hit this one dash one, I can just edit that point name real fast and update it. And hit apply. Okay. If we go back to TPS under setup, so just make sure everything's okay here. So sometimes the crew might have an extra setup they made by mistake. Uh, if you have several number ones, you can open this up. And right now, I, can, I know that this is my point that I set up on. We got mobile shots here. But if there's one that just had like one shot that was bogus, you can just delete that setup right from that screen. The actual, the adjustment in Infinity is pretty solid, so it can sift through that stuff. So it's, it's, it's not, you know, I, I would try the Traverse routine first before you start deleting setup points. Um, so once again, if I came back to my setup, let's say there's concern about the, the height on this setup, I could come in here and edit the height on that particular setup from the field notes if a mistake was made. You can set up your point. So if there's a wrong point that was selected. You can hit OK, and it'll update your position. Hit Next. This just shows the points that were measured off of that setup. 
and we're back at point number six. So hit next. If that was the wrong point, you can click on here and come down here and select what point you want to use as your back site. But that's correct. And it shows the the closure here. So we check within three hundreds and nine thousands. Um, there is a box here. We don't want to check it here, but if you applied this, this would scale. So if you're doing we don't want to do that because we're adjusting at Travers. But if you were actually um, doing a regular setup and uh, then you wanted to scale this misclosure here to your topo points, then apply that after for your other regular setups. Okay. And this shows a computed scale because uh, we're doing the surface to grid. All right. So I'll just hit finish. Uh, this button here will show all the points that we selected so we have our mini prisms um, i can customize the order that i see this information here okay so once again i can right click select columns and maybe i just want to take a look at the target height and i want to make sure i got the right target height okay so what we'll do we'll hit okay and there's our target height right here so if for some reason we had some long target heights I could I could edit this right here. So if if these points here have the wrong target height, I could right click, edit my target height, and put in the right target height. Everything's okay. So still don't, don't want to do anything there. I can also have the wrong prism offset. I could highlight and change that to a 30 mil or a 360. So once again, you can check your field notes. And um, here's your atmospheric. So if they have the wrong temperature and pressure. And we can update that as well. So it's pretty handy. Um, we can edit that information. Everything's looking fine in here. I just want to show you that in case you need to have a look at that, that's how I can edit that data. So right now everything is looking good. Uh, go back to view. There's our inspector. And once again, um, what I can do now is I can come over here. I can access to adjust the travers in several spots. I like to do it here. It's very simple. This is the name of, we call it 913. That's what we collected in the field. That's our traverse. And we'll right click. And there's a report here, but what I want to do is say open the traverse wizard. Now, when I select it here, we'll take a quick look over here. Here's the unadjusted closure from the field. So we'll compare the before and after adjustments. So that's showing us right here, the, the property grid of 913.22 traverse. Okay, so hit the open the wizard. And I'm running version four, and it automatically puts the whole tra traverse over here. Um, if you have older version of Infinity, you'd have to hit this button to transfer all the tra traverse points over. Okay, and you can pick which ones that you want to customize, but everything looks here, good here. We went from one to two to three to four, and close back on one. And that's what it shows down here. You can edit this information. But everything the guys in the field was fine. So we, we started, set up a point number one, back to point number six. And then when we did our closing angle, we set up at one. And once again, we foresighted to close our angle on six. But if you wanted to edit that information, you can hit the pencil and pick the points that you want to use to set up on. But I would just leave all this alone. Everything was done fine. It's really just confirming what we did in the field. Okay. So hit next. This is interesting. Um, it shows all the observations. And right now we have a tolerance of 15 seconds for our angles. I'm just gonna bump that down to five seconds. We have very short, so 15 seconds is a little bit loose. Um, and now it, it flags two of the setups where we exceeded that five seconds of the angular tolerance. So see it's red. So I'm gonna click on point number two. I got a back sight and four sight. So if I open this arrow up, it'll show, um, let's just maximize this. You'll see the first one here, it's just all 5.1 seconds. In reality, I would leave that in there. We've got very short turns, but if you want to disable, you just sort of check that. Then we'll come to the four sight and everything looks okay there. All right, and now this turns green. I'll do the same thing point number four. So once again, we'll open up the back sight. Once again, in reality, I wouldn't, it's just off of here. So, un but for just uh, to show you how to do it, we'll just uncheck that and away we go. 
Now, sometimes what happens is when you uncheck, it might flag another uh, observation. And, and at, at some point, you just want to, you know, you, you don't want to uncheck, you want to use that data. So just be very careful, um, but just use your discretion. In reality, I, I wouldn't have unchecked these, but I just want to show you how to edit that information. If you page over to distances, this will show the distances and we have a tolerance of 300. Um, you know, once again, if I change that to 100, then it'd flag certain points, but all that data looks looks very good, okay? And it just shows how how they agree with one another for your backsite four sites and, um, and any adjustments in, in the change in elevation. So all that looks really good. So I'm gonna use that and leave that alone. All right, so come back, I'll hit the next. All right, and it's gonna come up and it's gonna ask us, how do you wanna adjust your the Travis? So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna use compass rule or transit. I'm not gonna use the least squares for conventional data. Uh, you really need cross ties. So I always use just the compass rule. That's what I default to. And we'll scroll down here. I just use all these standard settings that Infinity gives us. There's a box here saying compute misclosure. Leave this alone. This is verifying what we did in the field. So we wanted our closing point. We closed our angle on point number six. This is great. If there's some issue, you can check this box and edit that. But we want to leave that alone. Everything we did looks perfectly fine. So we're going to accept that and hit the next button. And this shows the misclosures right here. So right now it comes up. There's our delta northern, delta eastern misclosure, and delta height. And you can see that uh, the 1D and 2D accuracy has increased a little bit uh, from before. And it says, how do you want to distribute the error? So angular misclosure, I'm going to come down here and say equally. And hit equally here. And here's our misclosures uh, in height, length, so around 400 and angular misclosure. We had very short back sites here, relatively speaking, so we had five set up, so this is realistic. This is really just a guide. I would not pay attention to this here. I think this is really indicating the maximum error that you can see if you have the maximum angular error over that distance. So um, you're really looking at these values here and these closures up here. Okay, and this confirms the angle that we're closing on. So once again, I don't want to change that. We're going to leave that. That looks great. And we'll hit the next button. All right. So once again, it's going to come here and show our points. Um, it's going to show how much we adjusted in northern and eastern and in the height. Okay, from our raw observations. All right. And that looks good. We're not going to scale anything. We're just going to keep everything adjusted like we did here. And then we'll hit finish. All right, so it comes up and it says TPS application. The stuff's been changed. And basically, there's a slight rotation. Um, and we'll hit the OK button. And what we'll notice now is see how it updated here for under the inspector, the icons changed. So point number one and six are fixed. Point number 1,000 and 1,001 were topo shots. We took all of our points to join, join the Travis routine. And now these points, two, three, and four, are now adjusted, okay? So these are now the adjusted values. There's the height, northern, whoops, and easting. So I can move this around, put the code over here. And once again, that, that shows the results we have here. So what I'll do is I'll export this. I can hit these points and say export, selection, come down here, pick ASCII file, and then I can export this data here. Okay. Um, there's also a nice report. So if you come down here to our report, we can hit the Travis report here and print this out. So this will go through all the information. It's very handy. And I'll show, hey, the misclosure was off 300. This flag is red because that's our tolerance. It slightly exceeded it. And it'll go through and show you um, all the adjustments. 
and all the reduced observations for each, uh, each point. If we scroll down to the bottom, we'll start at the bottom, and it just shows all the, uh, the, the height and the, the delta heights and the adjusted values. And then once again, here's the uh, misclosure information. So it's very handy, very, very, uh, if you want to put this in your report for your client, it's, it's really easy to access that information. And once again, it's, it's in here as well. If you click on your the traverse here, there's your report there as well. And you'll notice that this is now highlighted, but now updated. And our values have been updated here. Okay, so those are misclosures. All right, let's take a quick look at the uh, the data that we have. So if we come back, uh, once again, when we're in infinity, we, uh, this is a preliminary, when we first bought it in unadjusted, then after we adjusted, you can see that it increased the 1D and 2D closures, okay? And once again, we just, from the Travis report, we can take a look at the the misclosure in latitude, height, and departure, the 1D, 2D accuracy, how we balanced it, that information is displayed, is also displayed when we adjusted it uh, in infinity, took a screenshot, and this just shows all the misclosures in height and uh, horizontal and vertical. So once again, just real quickly, uh, these are shots that we shot with our base rover UHF, and then we traverse round. And once again, we just compare this as a rough check. Point number two is 31.63. The RTK is 31.634. That's smack on. And in Easton, it's uh, 0.155 compared to 0.157. That's smack on. The elevation is within 200s, 0.39 to 0.41. I've come down to point number four, uh, 78.73. Uh, that's within three hundreds, and 0.786, that's within under three hundreds. And then once again, the, the orthometric height, 0 0.292, that's within two hundreds. So it's just a, here's our adjusted values that we exported. It's smack on. We compared it with our UA, uh, RTK control points, and point number one and six are the control points we came off of and shot it in. So that shows just how tight the traverse is and also how tight the UHF RTK is. Okay. All right. So that concludes a brief overview on how to adjust data infinity. Hope you found it beneficial. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Thanks for your time.